Hey, Tony, how you doing? Good, good. <clears throat> um, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, also, I don't know if you want to have your cam on. I mean, that's up to you. You're welcome to keep it off or on. Um, but uh, all right, perfect. I'll go ahead and populate that, bring that up. And Dang. we'll bring up. Ooh. Look at that so happy face. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. So, uh, you know, doing incredibly well as of uh, last week. And I think uh, a lot of players are very excited to see, you know, what you will bring to that table. Um, you know, talk to us about last week. How did you feel about uh, the Webcam Weekly and your experience playing in the tournament? Yeah, so the Webcam tournament was very well organized, you know, kind of as expected. A lot of uh, good organizers. I think there was a, a strong team. Uh, that was there to organize the event. I love the player meeting. Um, Tim did a really good job at going down like a checklist to make sure that everybody was well informed of how the event was going to go. Um, it was it was a fun tournament. The energy uh, stayed alive throughout the whole tournament. I did get a little bit fatigued and tired towards my later rounds. Right. But it was probably the best webcam tournament I've ever played in. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so we, we did recognize that it was a bit long. <laughs> this was for the first one, you know, uh, moving forward, at least this one. And, you know, we'll, we'll gauge always, but I think three rounds is probably that sweet spot for the middle of the week tournaments to get people in there and playing. So uh, so we'll, we, we will shorten that out. But in terms of like, uh, how'd your matchups feel? You know, how how did uh, how did you feel playing out through the tournament uh, and finishing undefeated? Um, my matches, they were against good players throughout the whole day. Um. You know, there was a, a level of adaptability that I had to go through because I don't really get a lot of chances to play the game. And it's also exciting in a way because, you know, just being like, oh, I can do this really cool thing during a webcam tournament and then actually pulling it off. It has a huge uh, sense of reward. So I think there was a lot of uh, tight games. Um, you can still watch it on my Twitch channel, uh, Iowa the Boat. And... But yeah, I had a, had a lot of fun, a lot of strong opponents. Awesome. Um, all right, so like, be real with me here. How often did you bring in Kirishima? <laughs> I brought in Kirishima every single round except for round, I think it was three or four. I can't remember. I think mm -hmm. it was four. Round four, I didn't bring Kirishima because game one uh, took so long. Mm -hmm. I, I guess technically I did bring Kirishima, but like... The second game barely, barely mattered mm -hmm. uh, just because our first game took so long. So I kind of figured we we would have went to time because it was a really grindy match. Both my and my uh, opponent, we put each other at one health. So, um, but yeah, I, you're still alive. <laughs> I can 100% say that there was one round against uh, Dylan, my my round three opponent. And if I did not have uh, Kirishima to fight his Kirishima, I would have lost 100%. Mm -hmm. So is is that the thought behind siding in Kirishima, just for like those matchups that like he just stands a better chance, especially in things like the mirror? Uh, you know, I think the Void Kirishima actually fights off Kirishima really well in terms of like if you're playing again, uh, if you're playing like an Earth build or anything like that, it's kind of like that where you're kind of gauging your options when you kind of bring him in. Yeah, I think it just so happened that because I was siding into Kirishima, I do think that Kirishima is the best character, and I think that Void is his best symbol right now. Mm -hmm. um, it just happened to work out that way. But, I mean, logically speaking, the initial idea why I sided Kirishima into Eraserhead was so I can get around uh, Eraserhead's 19 health. Right. You know, if it wasn't Kirishima, I would have changed to an another character. Um, but I did Kirishima because he was the most optimal option. Okay, so ge generally speaking, you know, a, a character that has lower life total and then, you know, pivot to something that can withstand probably like a longer game that can take in a bit more damage and kind of grind it out, right? Exactly, yeah, because there was uh, round two, my opponent Tyler, um, you know, a player from Omaha, they actually beat me out game two because we went to like mid game and I was holding like, I don't know, three or four blocks. And I'm trying to defend, but he just vomits out this attack string, and nothing I could do could have um, helped me survive. I just lost. So that mm -hmm. 19 health uh, is very, very squishy. 
Okay. Uh, Jelly, any question? Uh, no, I mean, I've, I've been doing a lot of testing with uh, the Void in general. Uh, like I said, I was play testing around with Kirishima. Um, I, so Void lets you get access to the EDA uh, packet. Is that correct, if I remember correctly? Yep, correct. So when you have access to the speed hate and speed you know, buffing, do you think that that, especially with like, you said using your race as well, being able to also get the speed buff and you know, uh, debuff. Do you what do you feel about erase their head versus Kirishima? Do you think it's just an auto transfer in game two going to Kirishima instead? So if I'm playing against uh, Kirishima, do I automatically go into um, Kirishima? I think so because like okay, um, it just makes more sense that way because Kirishima is at a level where he's just indisputably the strongest. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he has an inherent bad matchup. So that being said, I don't think that Eraserhead would stand a better chance against Kirishima. I mean, you, it's still doable. Like, it's still probably like, I don't know, a 40-60 matchup. I, don't, sure. I, I actually have no clue. But if I can play my Kirishima against my opponent's Kirishima, I'll, I'm willing to take that bet that I'm going to win. I got you. Neat. Mm -hmm. Take it down over to uh, basically just flat out, you know, who can run the Kirishima better and then trust your abilities as a pilot to be able to get there. Mm -hmm. And a deck builder. Um, I do right. have some, uh, I give myself some pride in my deck building skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think like, especially me being like, I've only been playing this game for a couple of months and I think that's like a huge aspect. There's so much variety in deck building especially because you know every character has their three symbols and then every symbol has such a depth of cards um i find myself lost in the sauce a little bit sometimes so i huge shout out to like yourself and players like that who are able to just string together uh these very succinct game plans that while uh i, I think the balance is uh being able to have a lot of options but at the same time don't get so lost in your options that your main game plan gets lost and i think that's that's the beauty in where and where I find myself studying a lot of like your deck list and other uh, players in the community. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and I loved how you said it because that's how I feel about deck building um, with, with this game. There's a lot of options, but you cannot lose yourself in how many options you have. You got to be able to, to focus a, a point and deck build effectively in a tournament mm. setting. So... I guess jumping onto that, with it when it comes to your deck building strategy, do you have that end goal in mind, like that you know almost not to say kill turn in mind, and then build backwards, or is that like how do you do things? Just curious. Yeah, yeah. So every deck needs a uh, kill condition. That's like mm -hmm. the the first thing I um, tell people when they send me their deck list. I'm just like, how how do you kill somebody with this? You know, um, people are <laughs> are meant to get KO'd. And gotcha. I do think that uh, players need to invest in looking at how foundations can be defensive because I think that there's a saying where defense wins championships and you have to have that mindset when you're deck building and playing this game because if you watch a lot of my past matches on my on my Twitch or, you know, what have you, a lot of my tournament runs have been recorded. Um, there's so many turns where I play uh, my foundations so tight that I'm literally blocking all of my opponent's attacks using the last card in my hand and the last card on my staging area. And, you know, shout outs to the, the viewers that like, they're, they basically were like, wow, dude, I, can't. I just saw what you did and I really appreciate how well you played that defense turn. I think defense is something that needs to be... Um, valued more in in this game in my hero academia because it's mm -hmm. there you just have to you have to master it mm -hmm. i've always seen like aggro being the you know when something new comes out aggro is always the what attracts people the most right yes and if you focus solely on just the aggro aspect you really are going to be lacking on all that uh defense like i said the defense stuff like i've seen people just go ham attack 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 and mm -hmm. oh now you got nothing you, you ran out of gas now it's your turn you know what i mean yep yeah and i'm gonna sell myself out on this one but <laughs> i'm actually playing bakugo today i'm Ooh, taking a bakugo challenge where... and i've actually shoved a lot of defense in here so oh. um 
like if you it. can <laughs> if you play me you're, you're in for a surprise so I, <laughs> I do value defense a lot and i got a ton of it today awesome oh well, i think i think bakugo is an excellent choice in that that like he already has so much baked in offense that, mm -hmm. that 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 probably carries its own weight and then if you you know orient yourself to making sure that the other weaknesses where you might falter like you said you know defense like really putting in a focus on defense um will kind of balance out those uh that inherent strength that bakugo has and just you know pull in the weight of uh, maybe the other areas where he might be a little bit weaker for sure mm -hmm. so then uh i guess that's a good transition you know you're bringing in bakugo <laughs> Uh, if, you know, taking a look at, you know, options available out there, we saw uh, a lot of characters played as a one of in last week's tournament, a couple that weren't taken. Um, do you think there's any sleeper characters that people, uh, that you're surprised isn't seeing as much representation or something that could see a level of success if people like jumped into and gave it a try? Dang. Um, honestly, I think there's a lot of characters like that and I could go through the whole list of characters. I, I'd actually want to do that, but like um the two ones that i want to see uh win a tournament or top and do well i think sue you um you know mm -hmm. asui is really good and someone asked me like what's her best symbol and honestly i think the life symbol for her is very underrepresented and um here's my advice to anybody that's like deck building or like trying to make a character better if you have access to a card that says draw that's how you um, even out the Kirishima and Eraserhead matchup mm -hmm. is because they draw so much and they have like so much card advantage. You need to be putting foundations in your deck that say draw because foundations are extensions of your character card. Mm -hmm. So if you're adding um, foundations into your deck that say draw, then you're being able to catch yourself up to Kirishima. In fact, because I was playing 4x uh, passing the torch in my Mineta deck, I was able to beat a uh, Kirishima player in a in the tournament so yeah draw is very important mm -hmm. i think people need to invest in life frog girl i think that'd be really good <laughs> i've i've played her a little bit she 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 can get crazy uh i've tried a lot of different builds i've been trying you know with amphibious ambush without amphibious ambush i'm still on the fence with regarding that card in her deck specifically because of her effect already kind of does it mm -hmm. um and then you kind of see that whole, hey, I can make them put one of their foundations into a pool. But then again, hey, I'm giving them another foundation. So it's one of those like, ah, do I really want to do that? Do I need to do that? Um, she has a lot of, she has, she has ability to, you know, destroy you on turn two on her second turn. So that draw just further extends it, like you said. Yeah, what I like about her is she... Um... When you're playing her, she feels like you're playing a frog because you're mm -hmm. flipping a bunch of cards and you're like <laughs> kind of hopping. Right. Um, Let's kick it but out. <laughs> she also has a unique uh, style of gameplay that no other character has access to, and it's a effective way to beat your opponent. And while her aggro version is good, I think people should play her under life because you start getting into that realm where you're not playing as aggressively, but you're starting to look at how do I build myself up um mm -hmm. you know either faster than my opponent or to catch up with my opponent and that's why i think she's good um another character because uh i didn't want to name just one character i think ochako's pretty tight too okay so i do like ochako i mm -hmm. like the um the a amphibious ambush and meteor shower attack with, with her Ugh, that's a... <laughs> just yeah <laughs> just string a million attacks out of just a card or two cards. <laughs> yeah, too much. That's like those are really that. fun. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, myself, I think Kamui Woods is an interesting character. I think uh, I think he works really well, and I think uh, uh, you know when more players get access to him, we'll be seeing him more because I, I do think he's one of those characters where if you're not used to playing against him, his play style is like different enough that he can catch you also by surprise. So I think. Uh, that that's the realm of like you know one of characters that we're seeing people play here and there that uh i'm hoping that we will see more of uh, as people get more adapted and used to uh the different things in the meta yeah it's it's really hard to kill um kamoi woods i remember this one time i was playing in the omaha smash and this player his name is jeremy he had five kamoi woods triggers so all <laughs> of my attacks had minus five damage and then he also activated resistance, so my next attack got like <laughs> minus two damage, and right. I just ended my turn because like I can't kill you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Awesome. Well, uh, I don't know if you had any other questions, uh, Jelly, to uh, ask before we let the man get ready for the tournament. No, good luck. Thank you. I, I do have a question for you guys. Yeah, sure. go for it. Um, What's your favorite character uh, out of the set? I'll let you go first. <laughs> has to be Shoto. I mean, Shoto is an answer in response to uh, I just like the character from the show as a whole. But additionally, um, I just love the way he plays. Um, I think uh, at any point in time, if I'm a good enough player where I can recognize what part of their attack string or what part of their build string I can punish the most with his ability to basically cancel it out, I want to be rewarded for my matchup knowledge by being able to make that kind of decision and then have the explosive range draw ability that he has. So I think not only is I love the character, but I think being able to have that option on a character gives him a lot of growth potential in the future, as well as just allows me to be more flexible with the matchups I face. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, for me, um, I've been doing a lot of playtesting, and the character that I keep bouncing back to is Ida. Um, I, I love just that ability just to outright say no and then hand step before you can do anything. And taking that first, you know, like, let me go ahead. Oh, you're about to do your big wombo comp. No, I'll just end it. Just, just stop. <laughs> stop. Yeah, just, just in the tracks, just nah, you know, enhance, and nah. that's it. Well, we're going to stop that here. It, it's always been funny where, like, even if I don't have anything, I'm like, I'll take first enhance, I'll pass. <laughs> like, <wait. laughs> oh no! I really love his uh, the speed synergy, uh, especially now that we have access to plus ultra. He can just get get really dumb with that uh, that finishing combo. His buff plus a previous attack's buff, then double it all, and then uh, reciprocal burst it into so much damage, so much speed, and I love it. I love that one. It's like a two card combo, effectively. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, do you have any other questions you'd like to ask us before we let you on your way, Tony? <laughs> or uh, any shout outs that you'd like to say? Uh, feel free to uh, promote anything you got going on. Uh, this is your stage. Um, well, if you could please follow me on, on Twitter, that's where I post all my content. It's uh, Iowa, like the state, um, and then the boat, all in one word. So that'd be cool. But I have to shout out, you know, my local play group. Um, Shane Duckworth, Tyrell Scott, those are uh, two of my really good friends. Also, um, Fat Fatty Power is really awesome. And I'm starting to meet uh, more people like coming into the game. So shout outs to them uh, from the Dragon Ball Super community. Hmm. And yeah, I mean, honestly, like sh shout outs to everyone. I I just love being here, um, being able to to enjoy this card game with you guys. Awesome. Well, we are super excited to have you here ourselves. Uh, best of luck with Bakugo this tournament. Uh, we hope to see you fight it over at the top tables. Very excited to see uh, your matchups. And uh, will you be streaming this run today or are you going to keep it a little bit more low key? I will be streaming. Awesome. Yep. So for those of you guys on Twitch, uh, definitely go check out Iowa the Boat on Twitch. Uh, he will be running his games. And if you guys want that excellent insight he has as he's playing out throughout the tournament, definitely go check that out. Uh, but with that said, thank you very much, Tony. Uh, good luck with your tournament run. Postings should be going, pairing should be going up in a second, and uh, we hope you the best with your tournament run. Thank you. See ya. See ya. All right, that was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was great. It's it's always nice getting into the player's head to see what they're thinking and stuff. Mm. So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, that was an awesome wealth of knowledge. Um, also, like I had to close down the alert box because or else uh, the entirety of the <laughs> interview was going to be sworn by uh, sub alerts. But uh, head of hustle, uh, thank you very much for getting the community out there and giving it. And of course, we did have two additionals from there. So Akko Taco and War Teacher with the Prime Games. Very much appreciated. But pairings will be going up in a second. Uh, we're going to pull up a matchup soon. Uh, you know what? You got any matchups you want us to line up for first? You know, we're going to have the ability to go out and search anything interesting we find out in the Discord. Uh, is there anything on there? Any particular matchups you'd be really excited to see? Oh, man, I don't know. I did just get notified that they're going to be pushing the start back just a little bit. Uh, I said about 15 minutes, so... Um, okay. No, I'd be... So there's a couple characters. I, I guess some of the characters I would love to see are some of the new Plus Ultra characters, if anyone has them. Mm -hmm. uh, Mount Lady, uh, we saw a lot of Gen Con All Might, or you know All Might Three, whatever version yep. you want to call them. Mm -hmm. um, 
We, I think, I think there was an Ojiro player last week. Um, yep. I, we haven't seen Mezzo, so I would, I wouldn't mind seeing some of him. True. Um, I don't know. There's, there's some stuff. I think if if we can get all my one player on stream, I think that'd be really good. Um, I think he has some serious potential. Like I said, I've been on the the opposite side of the board where We're receiving end. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, they had. They had like 12 cards in hand and five momentum. And they're like, all right, we're going to go ahead and do powerful. I think it was like powerful 12. And then he burned five momentum to give it 60 damage on a reverse throw. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah, I guess you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had no way to deal with that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of throw strategy. So my first, and I actually finally found it. I was talking about it last stream when I actually found it. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I played some UVS uh, when the Soul Cal one of the Soul Calibur sets came out, and uh, uh, the deck that I got pushed into was uh, Astaroth, and it just it really got me comfortable with the idea that no matter what, nine times out of ten you're taking at least half damage. Um, so <laughs> right. just being able, and then like, so so I'm always just trying to look like okay, so how can I set up a throw? that deals so much damage that even if you block it, I'm like taking you out. So yeah. like so like those type of strategies, like the All Might of the World, uh, the Midorias, if you can line up a throw uh, with like mm -hmm. his powerful ability to burst up damage, um, are like super excellent. I love those kinds of strategies. I, I talk about how great All Might is, and then I, I tried playing him one day, and I was like, oh, look, at, I got 40 damage on my throw, and my opponent's <laughs> like, that's cool, you're so obvious. Oh, yeah, that's a good too. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but that is the beauty, right? At least there should always be a response. There should always be an answer, you know. Correct. Yeah. So at, at the very least, we we get they exist, and it's like if my opponent is like, okay, well, I guess you saw the line. <laughs> like, dude, you're so obvious. Like, like, oh uh, yeah. Hmm. I guess that's I am. <laughs> so Shoji, that's that's the card that I I think he's a lot of fun. Uh, mm. I, well, I think he, his form ability is pretty spicy. It's really good. I mean, it's additional draw, right? And not only is it just random draw, it's actually selective draw. Mm -hmm. um, so you're sacrificing L for the ability to, like, on your critical moments, really be able to line up the specific foundation or attack that you're looking for, which I think is incredibly good. Um, and oh, then yeah. enhance, commit, uh, your attack gets two damage, and then your next one gets two damage. So pretty good. Um, oh, go ahead. No, that was just that was, that was basically it. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ability that he can like in that early gameplay, uh, that review step. You can review out a uh, zero difficulty, and you're like, all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick that right back up real quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, I'm, an extra card in the hand. <laughs> this is nice, you know. Zero, yeah. you don't lose any health. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I think uh, he's really cool. I will say Mount Lady is probably going to take some time before we start seeing Mount mm -hmm. Ladies um, because the deck really does benefit from having multiples. Oh, yeah. Um, so if I just bring her up so you guys can know what we're talking about. Um, so naturally, you know, we are into the first month of, um, you know, local game stores really having access to be able to start hosting these kinds of tournaments. So it'll take some time. But I think once they do, I think um, just because we don't have a lot of incentives, there's a few characters that work really well with having multiple character cards in your deck. Mm -hmm. So I think the more, uh, you know, the more characters we have that really benefit on that front, um, it's more fun just because we have more ways of being able to play with the card types. Um, exactly. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Here's Mount Lady, you know, six hander, 29 life, enhance, uh, commit. You get to add one copy of Mount Lady from your discard pile to your stage face up. If you could not, you may add one card from your discard pile to your momentum. And then additional enhance, uh, discard one momentum. This attack gets plus two damage for each Mount Lady character card in your stage. Um, mm -hmm. So effectively, um, you're, you know, pushing additional six plus damage uh, going into the so mid game, good. which is so incredibly good. Um, and she starts feeding her momentum once you're out of Mount Ladies. So you're basically always going to be able to set that up. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very, very strong. Especially being in, you know, like Earth and Void and those like really, um, and even just good flat out. Just being in like those ones that really allow you to be able to get attacks that just throw themselves into momentum or uh, oh, yeah. lots, lots of ways to feed that. And if I remember correctly, she does share all three symbols with uh, Kirishima. So if Kirishima is good, Mount Lady's good, right? In theory, that's probably it, not it, accurate. But. I mean, <laughs> if the symbol's good, odds are, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. No, but there's a lot of good momentum uh, using stuff in those three symbols, especially in uh, good. So just being able to go back into that further momentum generating and just mm. go ham. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
So lots of fun characters on that front. Um, but yeah, so I think, you know, there's a lot to look forward to. Uh, the tournament mm-hmm. will start uh, in about 10-ish minutes. Um, so we're just going to go on a quick five-minute break, guys. Give ourselves the ability to stretch our backs a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed the pre-show. Let us know, actually, uh, you know, whenever this gets uploaded to, uh, I would imagine, YouTube later on, uh, what you guys would like to see in terms of the pre-show. We're super open to making it more community-driven. You know, we can take you know, more questions from viewers and all that. So uh, please let us know either in this in the chat here, and I'll pull them up later, or on the Discord how you guys would like us to expand the pre-show. And we would love to give you guys more discussion uh, and just and you know content in general in regards to the card game. But uh, with that said, we will take a five minutes, uh, give our backs a stretch, get ready for the tournament, make sure that we're all lined up for that, excited. and <laughs> very excited. And we'll be jumping into round one very soon. So we'll see you guys in a few minutes.